Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. I'm glad to see so many people who are interested in my topic. And today we will tell you about smart recommendation system and some modern integrations with Sitecore CDP and Order Cloud. And before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Sergey Baranov. I'm Sitecore lead developer at Brimit with eight years of experience in Sitecore. I'm uh, Sitecore technology MVP for the last three years. And also I'm a machine learning engineer. So I hope I'm the right person to tell about recommendation systems, especially in context of Sitecore. And this agenda of my presentation. Uh, first, we will have a fast overview of uh, recommendations, just to know uh, what is it and why recommendation is very important for e-commerce. Yeah. Then I will tell you about different recommendation types and how they work. Uh, in the second part of my presentation, we will discuss some design strategies, uh, where and how you should place recommendation widgets on your website. Uh, then I will show you our demo solution and we will explain uh, some available architecture types, like composable DXP, software to service. And of course, I will show you also how to measure uh, performance of your recommendations, how to measure revenues and conversions. And of course, I will be glad to answer your questions at the end of my presentation. Okay, let's start. What is recommendation? I hope all of you know what is it. In short, recommendations helps users to find more of items, what they like, or some relevant alternatives. Recommendation systems are systems that make some suggestions based on uh, different available data that you have. It can be, for example, a checkout history of users, uh, customer profiles, or even some uh, items, metadata. And the most common examples where you have seen recommendation systems in action uh, will be, for example, Amazon, Netflix, or even uh, social networks like Facebook or Instagram uh, with their friendship recommendations or advertising campaigns. Uh, I mean that it doesn't matter what kind of items do you have on your website. It can be books, movies, applications, uh, products. And behind this scene uh, of all recommendation, uh, recommendation systems are just a set of some algorithms and use some types of different data that you have in context. And before we start deep diving into recommendation systems, let me answer the question why recommendations are so important for e-commerce. And let's start with some global statistics. Uh, in fact, uh, visits where your shoppers clicked on recommendations comprised just 7% of all visits, but uh, highly increased orders and revenue rates up to 25%. Now, recommendations are also uh, directly linked to longer shopping, shopping visits. Uh, shoppers who click the recommendations spend on average about 13 minutes per session. Uh, shoppers who click the recommendation uh, are nearly uh, twice as likely to come back to your website if compared with shoppers who didn't click a recommendation. And also, shoppers that click the recommendation uh, view about five times more unique products per visit. And also shoppers that click the recommendation, about five times are more likely to create a shopping cart and about five times more likely to complete a checkout. And in fact, 24% of products that are bought by users who click the recommendations were recommended to them before. And more proof, more than a half of orders uh, from buyers who click a recommendation include a recommended item. Uh, when it comes to recommendations themselves, uh, some retailers uh, choose to let uh, artificial intelligence to do all this work. Uh, other retailers uh, integrate manual recommendations. Uh, but in general, of course, uh, the more product and visitors you have on your website, uh, the more it makes sense to uh, rely on machine learning. And before we consider these real smart recommendation types, 
Uh, let me uh, make a quick overview of uh, some recommendation types, types that, are, that don't have any machine learning background, but also are commonly used and very important. And the first group I named non-personalized recommendation. Uh, non-personalized uh, because of uh, these recommendations have the same content for all visitors. Uh, these recommendations are static. And the most famous uh, non-personalized recommendation is bestseller. It's a top. It's a product that were sold the most. Uh, sometimes you know, favoring more recent sales just to be remain uh, relevant over time. Uh, as you can see, the sellers, it's very simple to calculate. You just need to have all user history and find more frequently items. Uh, but the sellers have really a big ROI. There is a 80-20 rule, also known as Pareto principle. It states that uh, for many events, 80% uh, of 80% of effects come from 20% of causes. Uh, for recommendations in e-commerce, it can, can be interpreted like 80% uh, of your sales come from 20% of your products. And the second non-personalized recommendation type is trending. It's very similar to the sellers, but with, with only one difference that uh, trending recommendations is a combination of recent sales and recent product views. And for implementation, you also should take into account uh, product page views. And the next type is the top rated products. Uh, if you have any explicit feedback from your customers, for example, some rating systems or like dislikes, uh, you can easily calculate top rated items and recommend them to your customers. And just to sum up, non-personalized recommendations are the sellers, trending, top rated, mostly viewed, and any other types that have a static content. And because of they are static, you can easily use any caching technologies, mechanism, just to prevent calculation the same for, for different requests. And very uh, you can find data tools for, for these types of recommendations. Of course, if you have integration with Order Cloud, the best option is to use Order Cloud to extract a history of checkouts and calculate the sellers trending recently items. And, and the second available options, if you have integration with that core CDP, uh, you can use some tools that that core customer data platform has, like. Uh, data lake export servers. And the next group of recommendations is the uh, user context recommendations because uh, they, these types of recommendations are based only on context of current user. We don't take into account uh, all other users. And the most commonly used examples of user context recommendation uh, abandoned products and recently viewed items. I hope you know what is abandoned products. If someone adds some product to cart but didn't complete checkout and his, his session was ended, it's a good idea to remind him about these abandoned products in the future. Uh, recently viewed products is just a browsing history of products for a current visitor, but this type of recommendation is also very useful, especially if you have uh, many other types of recommendations on your website. And, and visitors sometimes can be uh, navigate to product by clicking your recommendations. And he may not know how to find your product by using your navigation panels or menus. Uh, the best idea where to get data for this type of recommendation is set for customer data platform, because in that core CDP, you always has a context of your user. And it's easy for you to extract data that you need. Uh, also, it's a good idea to integrate uh, site core send, uh, to send, for example, the same, the same abandoned products in emails. And one tip, if you have 
uh, integration with Order Cloud by using Order Cloud the Head Start, the Head Start application, it already uh, has uh, integrations with both Salesforce CDP and Salesforce Send. And the last group of recommendations is personalized. And I think it's the best interesting group and it uh, also is the most complicated because uh, almost all types of this type of personalization has machine learning background or any complex statistical calculations. And the main goal of all personalized recommendation algorithms is to extract some information from your available data and find relationships between users and products. Uh, algorithm take the knowledge from data about what products our user already likes. It can be two types, explicit feedback and implicit feedback. Explicit feedback is rating or like dislike, something that user click or and exp, uh, exp, implicit rating in something like page views, purchases, or add to cart events. And recommendation algorithm, uh, personalized recommendation algorithm try to answer the question, what other products should we recommend to that user? And there are multiple ways to answer this question. Uh, one option uh, is to find products which have similar attributes to products that our user already likes. And the second option is to find products which are liked by similar users. It's something like asking a friend for a recommendation or someone you trust because they have similar interests as you. And the last option is to find complementary items, not substitutable like in first and second option, but complementary. Now, for example, if someone buying a smartphone, we can recommend him headphones or recommend Coca-Cola to hamburger. And the first category where we find uh, products based on similarity in product attributes is named content-based filtering. Content is another a meaning for attributes of product. Uh, the second category is known as collaborative filtering. And and because users are finding products what they like with the help of other users or collaboration of users. That's why it's called collaborative filtering. And, and the last types is named uh, association rules learning. Uh, because we are finding rules that help us to associate one type of products with another. So content-based filtering. Uh, Let's say we know that our user like, for example, you know, books by a specific author and genre. And content-based filtering just find another books with the same or similar attributes and recommend them. Now the next category is collaborative filtering. Uh, for this recommendation type, first of all, we need to have order history for all our users. And there are two main types of content collaborative filtering, user-based and context-based. Uh, in user-based user collaborative filtering, we find top n users that are similar to our user. Then we look in, in the, into order history of these users and calculate more frequently items. And the second type of collaborative filtering is item-based. It's a little bit similar to user-based, but works in different way. Now, for example, we know that our current user likes item A. Uh, then we find a top you know, users that more, most frequently also like this item A. And then we look in other products that these users buy and we find more frequently items. And the similarity here is measured directly uh, by helping with another users. And the last type of recommendation is association rules learning. It's also known as 
market basket analysis. Uh, in this type of, re of recommendation, we try to find uh, complementary items, uh, not substitutable, like in content-based and collaborative filtering. And association rules learning algorithms try to answer the question what products are frequently bought together in single transaction or in a short period of time. And data representation in association rules learning is mainly in the form of conditional probabilities. We are trying to understand how the probability of purchasing product B is affected due to a purchase of product A. Uh, for this type of recommendations, we also need, need to have a full history of all orders history of all our users. And algorithm try to find relationship that show that buying a product A increases the likelihood of the person buying a product B. And these relationships uh, are called association rules. Uh, in this example, you can see only a recommendation for one item. But in real solution, it uh, can be up to five items in one rule. You know, for example, if you have three items in your shopping cart, uh, we can suggest some one item that frequently bought together with these three items. And the most commonly used in commercial solutions type is hybrid recommendations. And hybrid recommendations is just a combination of two or more and other types of personalized recommendations. And hybrid approach can be implemented by uh, different types of predictions separately and combine resul results uh, together and order by scoring. And hybrid recommendation system uh, will overcome the limitation of every single recommendation type. And it highly uh, increases uh, the prediction performance. Okay, let's move to design strategies. And I will show you shortly where uh, and how should you place recommendation widgets on your website. And we will consider the following <coughs> locations what kind of recommendation you can place on all pages. And we consider a separate home page, product details page, product category page, and checkout page. And <clears throat> the biggest mistake of many websites is that, the, that they show a static content for many pages on, on the website. It's a very annoying when you see the same content on many pages. And your recommendations start work uh, like advertising, not recommendation. A good example of a recommendation widget that you can use uh, on all pages is a uh, recently view items because it's dynamic and updates in real time when you click on the next page. And of course, it's a useful way for navigation through the items that you already navigated in the past. The home page is uh, most always the first touch point uh, for your shoppers. And home page is the key uh, for capturing attention for a visitor. And home page should have uh, relevant recommendations for all types of your visitors. Uh, for identified uh, users, you can show personalized recommendation. Of course, hybrid is the best option. If you don't have hybrid, you can use any other type, but personalized. And for anonymous user, you can show non-personalized recommendation like the sellers, trending, or top rated products. And because of home page is almost always the first page uh, that user opens, it's a good place to remind him about some abandoned product if he has. Product details page. Uh, visitors who land on product details page are still looking for something to buy. And it's a good idea to recommend, you know, to recommend him something similar or something that he can bought together with this item. And it's also known as 
upselling than cross selling. And the first option is to show similar products, and it can be easily achieved by using content based filtering. And another option is to show frequently brought together items. And you can do it by using association rules learning. Uh, product category page is also important page, and you should show personalized recommendations in the same way like you did on home page, but with applying filter by this category. And for identified users, you can show personalized recommendations with filter by performed, for example, and for Anonymous visitor, you can show sellers in this category. A checkout page. Checkout page is a prime time for upselling. And it's a perfect moment to offer complementary items and to complete customer checkout. And of course, association rules learning is the best recommendation choice for this page. And fun fact, uh, up to 25% of customers who click on these recommendations and actually order this item. Okay, let me show you our solution and explain how it works. Uh, we have a retail commerce website. We have an order cloud as a product catalog and as a storage for our customers and their orders. Uh, inside core, we configure our page, what product catalogs to use, and what types of recommendations to place to different pages. And for example, our demo solution is a multi-site solution. We have uh, four websites, but only one order cloud catalog. And it's very easy to implement a new website with the same design. It's almost like copy-paste. Uh, we have also machine learning service. It's our own implementation. It's a .NET core-based application, and it's work just like a web API. Uh, but before we can use recommendation, we need to train our models, and to do this, we need to download all orders history and all information about products from order cloud. And after that, we can train our models and can use recommendations. Uh, we use CDP as a middle layer between our browser and machine learning service. First of all, because of Sidecore CDP track all users' interaction. Uh, and the second, Sidecore CDP can help us to measure performance of our recommendation widgets and calculate revenue, conversions, etc. And also, it's a very good place for debugging if you have any troubles in production, for example. Uh, here you can see a list of frameworks that we use uh, for communication uh, between our servers. Uh, Order Cloud is communicated with browser by using Order Cloud SDK for JavaScript. Uh, our machine learning service in communicate with Order Cloud by using the same Order Cloud SDK, but in .NET implementation. Uh, Sidecore is headless uh, using SS, uh, GSS SDK with browser. And Sidecore CDP is integrated to website by using you know, Booksiver and JavaScript library. Uh, Sidecore CDP communicate with machine learning service by simple web API calls, and that's all. Now let me show you a demo how it works in real. As you can see, we have four different websites, uh, and only one difference between these websites is configuration. And first of all, each website has its own order cloud catalog ID. Uh, for example, we have one site with performs. We have another site with some 
uh, medical products. And that, uh, these sites uh, use different order cloud catalogs with different list of products. And the second uh, difference is uh, CDP point of sales. Mm, if you have experience with working with CDP, you know that you should provide point of sales just to the CDP can understand that is your website. Yes, we can also have a different type of recommendation widgets like abandoned card by sellers recently viewed. And for example, for personal recommendations, we have also different available options. Hybrid is the best. You can see also here a friendly ID that is an ID of CDP experience that our front end triggered. And there are also some additional settings. For example, for frequently buy, frequently bought together items, there are different algorithms. A priori is the famous one, the famous one, but it is slow. If P grows is has the same implementation, but much time faster. And also it's a, a Markov algorithm that also takes into account the orders of items that you place in your cart. Uh, here you can see example how our website looks like. Uh, as you can see, I am anonymous visitor. So in real, I see here trending products that are recommended for me. And uh, also when I navigate to product category page, I will see the same top sellers, but filtered by category. But once I log it in, I will see personalized recommendations. So as you can see, content switched. And because of personalized recommendation is machine learning based, this kind of items always have a score or likelihood or probability, some, no, some score that you can use for ordering your items. Let me show you another type of recommendations. For example, when we navigate to product details page, we can see similar products also that have some scoring and frequently bought together items. Let me, for example, add a product card. Go to checkout. And here on checkout page, I can see complementary products. Uh, when I add to cart more and more products, uh, recommended items that I can bought together will be smaller and smaller. So as you can see, scores is a little bit smaller. If I add more items, I will see nothing because of these items. No, any item frequently bought together with this item. And let me show you, for example, if I if I abandoned my session, let me do it first and navigate to home page. I will see products that are abandoned and it's a good reminder for me if I need to buy it. Uh, okay, let me show you how it communicates with other frameworks. So it's, it's you can see here, the communication with order cloud is implemented by using order cloud SDK and only difference with the request over 
over all our websites, it's a catalog ID. For example, this website has 0004 catalog ID, another site has another catalog ID in requests. 003. Okay. Mm. It's my machine learning part. It's also have integration with order cloud. As you can see, we use order cloud SDK to extract, for example, list of products and save it to training in the future and for extracting orders to save it in the future. And then we have a recommendation, recommendation, not con recommendation controller where we implemented all types of recommendations that I said before. And it works like a web API by Swagger UI that you can easy to test without your website even for example let me show you frequently bought together items for example for example i want to now two best items for from my catalog of medical goods so That's one course. Some best sellers. So it can be used like a web API. It's, it's easy, very, very easy for, for test. So next we have an integration with Sitecore CDP. So let's go back to our website. So as you can see, for example, if some events is happens, for example, add to cart, then our site push request to Sitecore CDP and Sitecore CDP track all user behavior Inside Core CDP, Inside Core CDP, first of all, is only one entry point for machine learning service in our solution. Let me show you experience. First of all, you need to add connection, first of all to have ability to communicate with your machine learning service. It's very easy to do. It looks the same as, uh, as I show you in Swagger. It has the same entry points. And we have end point for substitution to use it in different types of our web experiences. So let me show you how it looks in our experiences. So as you can see, by using CDP, you can easily calculate the conversion and revenue of your uh, web experiences for each category of recommendation. Uh, for example, as you can see in our solution, Frequently bought together item have the best conversion. It's a, our target was five percent, but in real, in real it takes eight percent. I hope uh, all of you know if you have experience with CDP how to uh, set up uh, this conversion. You need to at goal for for all of your experiences and there are two types binary goal uh, when you have calculate conversions and continuously goal if you want to calculate revenues 
uh, <coughs> uh, one more tip uh, if you want uh, if you want to calculate real numbers of uh, your uh, revenues or conversions uh, before uh, start live experiences you need to run experiments because uh, when you have many uh, uh, many types of recommendations uh, statistics is overlapping and uh, your results can be smooth but when you run experiment for, and you can allocate for each type of widgets a different buckets of users for example if you have uh, three different recommendation types and we want to calculate real uh, revenue values that we can have uh, we need to set up uh, four back, uh, 40 buckets for example for, for our first <coughs> recommendation type then um, buckets from 8 uh, 40 to 80 to the second and the last of buckets for the third so in this case <coughs> all visitors will uh, will be <coughs> will be see only one type of your recommendations that you want to test in in real time and statistics from all users will not be overlapped Okay, as it's all, there are some useful sources. In infographics, you can find uh, many of uh, charts with statistics. <clears throat> there are also some helpful articles when you can read about how to improve you know, profits by using recommendations on your website and some examples of recommendations. And also, there is one good uh, course on plural site, it's free. And it's a good entry point if someone is interested in how it works deep dive. Uh, if you are working with recommendations or integrate your solutions with Order Cloud or Sitecore CDP and face any troubles, reach me out in Sitecore Slack channel or Twitter. I would be glad to help you with your projects. Okay, thank you for we we have a couple of minutes for questions if anyone has questions yes please the api center that you're showing for the machine learning is it something that's built on a workflow framework like ml.net or something uh, yes if you are familiar with ml.net for example or any third parties machine learning systems like azure ml you can easily integrate any third parties exactly the same way as I integrate my own machine learning. But uh, our, our machine learning is fully implemented by ourselves. And we maybe share some uh, examples to our community in GitHub. Thank you.